Okay, so this video is about how to find a man that doesn't cheat. Um, it's actually pretty easy. Um, the hard part is, would you be willing to do what it takes to find that man, right? Um, and so now you can't do it with near with certainty, but you can do it with near certainty. There are circumstances in a relationship that you can find that make it nearly impossible that this type of man is going to cheat. So we're going to break it down into three categories. You have one, the approach, right? When a guy kind of flirts with you, asks you for your number, asks you out on a date. Two, you have appeal. So what is the appeal of that man generally to the opposite sex? And then uh, last group will be um, sexual desire. So how how often does this person want to have sex uh, as far as their frequency? How big of a deal is, uh, is that sex frequency to this person? All right, so we're going to go break those down in three categories. I'm going to start with the approach first. So the type that's most likely to cheat when you're looking at just the approach is the type that's that's uh, charismatic, uh, smooth, funny. He's ready for any objection you have really skilled at, at picking up uh, women. So now here's the thing. You don't have their resume to look at like you would on a, on a traditional job interview, but there are some parallels to a job interview. So say, for example, a, an employer didn't have a resume and just went by the interview process. The person that that is ready with every answer, who's very smooth, who's very comfortable, who's very confident in the interview process may likely be because they have a lot of experience with interviews. And if you have a lot of experience with interviews, it's likely that you are you don't keep jobs. So, I mean, if you're constantly leaving a job or constantly getting fired, you're going to be experienced with interviews. So maybe you've had, you know, 10 jobs in the last six years. That's not really someone that an employer would want to invest in because you've proven you're not going to be here long. And so one of the reasons you may be so good at the interview process is because you've had so many damn interviews, right? On the flip side, you take someone who's been on the same job for the last 15 years and just got laid off. If they're interviewing, the, the whole interview process may have changed since they last interviewed. They're asking questions they didn't ask when this person last interviewed and they're kind of unsure and they're nervous and they don't really want to be here. They never thought they'd be back in the job market, their last job they, they thought they would be at for the rest of their career. And so they may not have a very good interview. And so if an employer didn't have the resume, well, of course, he's going to go with the smooth, posh one over this person that seems very unsure of themselves. But with the resume, they're going to pick the person that's unsure of themselves, that shows they're qualified, they stay on a job. If you keep a job for 15 years, you're likely a good employee, uh, you're dependable, and uh, you work in a consistent enough way where an employer decided to keep you. If you've had 10 jobs in the last six years, I'm not going to waste my time on you. You're not going to be here long. You've proven that. But then that's because you have the um, assistance of that resume. Same with with uh, a man picking a woman up. You don't know that you're the the reason he's so smooth is because you're the 20th woman he's asked for uh, he he's he's asked for a phone number from in the last month, right? You don't know that. That's probably not someone you would want to date though. If cheating is a high priority for you, right? So someone that's really skilled at picking women up is likely as, as something that they enjoy doing and people don't generally like do, stop. They, they don't look, generally like to stop doing stuff they're good at and stuff they enjoy doing. Whereas the person that comes up to you and he's awkward, kind of stumbling over his words, maybe he's corny. He's unsure of himself. He clearly doesn't do this often, which is a compliment to you because he doesn't like doing this. He wishes he wasn't doing this. He's very uncomfortable but there's something about you that m made them feel like they can't allow this opportunity to pass them by without at least trying, even though it they wish they weren't doing it and they're so uncomfortable. That person is not likely to do this often. Um, he's likely that once he gets a girlfriend, he hopes he never has to ask another girl out again because he hated it, right? Hated the experience, super uncomfortable, more likely to be loyal. So in the, in the approach category, that person is more likely to be loyal than the person that's really skilled at 
uh, picking up women, right? That should be pretty obvious, but more women than not are going to give, uh, are going to respond better to the, uh, you know, the charm, the, the jokes and the confidence of the guy that's most likely to cheat in that category. Now let's go with appeal. So most likely to cheat as far as appeal, someone that is fit, someone that, you know, say makes a good income, um, someone that's attractive, right? Least likely to cheat, pretty obvious. Someone that isn't fit, someone that, that isn't very financially stable, isn't very financially uh, su successful, and isn't attractive, all right? So th those are pretty pretty easy and uh, to spot in those two categories, which one's gonna have the stronger appeal. Person with the stronger appeal has had likely better experiences with the opposite sex, likely gets more attention from the opposite sex, and is likely gonna find themselves in more tempting situations than the opposite sex and the person that no one really no one really wants, no one really has a strong desire for on, on a general sense, right? Then last, you have uh, sexual desire. This is a big one. So, and this is really, t testosterone, there's a direct correlation to sexual desire and the amount of testosterone that a man has. So people that have higher testosterone seem to ha also have higher sex drives and want sex more often. People with lower test uh, testosterone don't seem to want sex as, more, uh, as often, sex is as big of a deal to them, and so the sex frequency for these guys are gonna be lower. So the, obviously the guy that's more likely to cheat in this category is the one that he wants sex from me all the time. You know, every time you turn around, he's trying to have sex. You can't get out of the shower with him not being waiting at the door like a dog wagging his tail, waiting to have sex, right? And so you may enjoy that, but someone that wants sex all the time wants sex all the time. And, and that may be, there may be times where he wants it even from people other than yourself. Flip side, someone that barely wants to sleep with you is not likely to get out there hunting for another woman because uh, sex isn't that big of a deal. It's someone that wants sex once a week, maybe twice a week. Anything past that is like stressful or pushing it. Someone like that is less likely to cheat because sex clearly isn't a big deal for them, right? So, so, so if we add all these three categories together, the man most likely to cheat is uh, the, the confident guy with approach, the one that has the highest appeal to the opposite sex, and the one that, that uh, wants sex all the time, right? That's also the group that a lot of women gravitate towards. So I've always found it ironic that women will place honesty, loyalty, and a guy not cheating as their highest pri priority, and then also gravitate towards the guys most likely to cheat. So that would be the equivalent of you buying a Suburban and being shocked that it doesn't get great gas mileage. You just can't believe this huge Suburban with a V8 engine isn't getting 30, 40 miles to the gallon. And so after a couple of years, you take it back. The salesman's like, hey, I know last time you said you want a great gas mileage and you want that again. How about this Prius? You're like, no, nah, I'll try another Suburban. And shocked again. And car after car after car, you're getting big trucks, big SUVs. And every time you get one, you're just blown away that they don't get great gas mileage. A lot of women approach the dating market the same way. They only date from the group most likely to cheat, and they're shocked every time the group most likely to cheat cheats, right? So <laughs> I think it would be, it's this, you're being dishonest uh, to an extent delusional because your words aren't in line with your actions. Your words say that's what's important to you. Your actions say the opposite, right? Um, and so if you have to give up one of these categories to dramatically increase your chances, I think the category you'd want to give up is appeal. And not, not, I'm sorry, not appeal, approach. Uh, so someone... So you can still get someone that's attractive, maybe fit, uh, makes good money, and someone that also has a high sex drive, wants sex all the time. But if they're terrible at approach, they're not smooth, they're not super charming, they don't have a lot of game, right? Then that's clearly not something they do often. It's likely not something they enjoy doing. It's, it's part of the dating process. They wish they never had to do. And so this person got into a relationship uh, they're going to be less likely to cheat because they don't enjoy the hunting phase. They don't like hunting, right? 
And so um, if you had to give up one of those, that would be, I, I, that would be, I think the best one to give up because that's going to have the least impact on your day-to-day -day re relationship, right? Because once you get past the approach, then you just have like the kind of life you guys enjoy together and going out, hanging out. And this person, you got to be more patient with. Um, it may take a while for their personality to come out. They might not have an excellent first or second date. They don't do it a lot. So, so look at that as a compliment. This person is not skilled. He's not a skilled womanizer. He doesn't go out with women all the time. So it may take a while for you to get to his personality um, and, uh, and for him to open up and for you guys to maybe catch a vibe. Um, so be patient. You know, Don't expect an exceptional first or second date. He's probably going to be nervous. He probably doesn't date often, right? But this is only if, if, if not having someone cheat is really important, as important to you as you say it is, right? Um, what do you find a guy like this? Uh, if I was a woman and I was looking for this type of guy, someone that could be fit, could make six figures, um, could be attractive, and also could have a high sex drive, but maybe isn't, you know, really good, it isn't a womanizer, doesn't go out with women a, uh, a lot. Sounds crazy, but... Um, I'd go to the Tesla charging station. <laughs> if I was a woman, I'd be hanging out at the Tesla charging station. Uh, the kind of careers these kind of guys have, you figure uh, engineers, um, software designers, anything to do with computers, um, the kind of careers they don't have, sales, right? Doctor, lawyer, uh, business owner, um, jobs that require you to be really good, have really good people skills. Um, so their jobs require them to be hardworking, smart and organized and diligent, but maybe not have the best people skills. And so, and, and, uh, and so yeah, Tesla charging station, uh, some of the things you're going to find at a Tesla charging station, people with good credit drive Teslas, a lot of homeowners drive Teslas. Um, a lot of people that make six figures or more drive Teslas. Um, and so, yeah, if you had a nightclub or bar, isn't where this person is going to be. Um, if I had to pick a place, that's where I would hang out. So even if you have a gas car, <laughs> pull up to a Tesla charging station. And if the person is single, you're going to see husband material after husband material after husband material, pull up to charge their, their, uh, their Teslas. And believe me, these guys aren't flirted with often. So if you have a compliment for them, uh, uh, then they're likely to be receptive. And you may have to be the one that approaches. They may be so unskilled at approach that they're not going to do it at all. So you may have to kind of come out of your shell if finding a guy that doesn't cheat is really important to you, as important to you as you say it is. I know it's unconventional advice, but it'll work. Until next time, be different.